Johnson now at the free throw line. Crosses it. Looks for help on the double team. Looks it inside Abernathy. Driving shot is up. Good! Abernathy! Scramble Bay puts it up and got it! What a shot by Scotty Murray! Oh, rebound. Benson puts it back up and good! What a move by Benson! Indiana's number one. They've won it. Indiana's won it. They're the national champion for 1976. Can you believe it? Hoosier hysteria, it's more than just a saying. It's a statement of fact. Indiana is the basketball capital of the world. And to Hoosier fans, it's more than a game. It's a lifestyle. Hoosier hysteria embraces both men and women. It begins at a very young age, and it lasts a lifetime. It has roots at the elementary school level and then blossoms into the country's largest and best-attended high school state tournament with 403 teams competing for the prestigious state crown. The goal of most every player in that tournament is to experience the ultimate form of Hoosier hysteria, to play basketball at Indiana University and shoot for the NCAA championship. Indiana University has had a long winning tradition. The Hoosiers have captured or shared 12 Big Ten titles and have won the coveted national championship in 1940 and again in 1953 under the leadership of Coach Branch McCracken. For the past 23 years, Indiana's had some fine teams, but the national championship somehow has managed to elude them until this year. In 1976, the drought ended when a fine young knight, Coach Bobby Knight, led his proud band of Hoosiers in pursuit of collegiate basketball's holy grail, the NCAA championship. Coach Knight not only has taught his players the technical aspects of basketball, but has instilled in his men the qualities of character, dedication, and leadership, which will make them winners all their lives. I'm Hilliard Gates, and I'm proud to be part of this tribute to a great Hoosier team, and happy to share with you this great feeling of Hoosier hysteria. And now let's turn back the clock and join the voice of IU, Don Fisher, as we relive the 1975-76 Big Red National Collegiate Championship season. Four seconds to go, 92-85. Here's a shot by Flynn, no good. UCLA still boarding. And the rebound comes to Marcus Johnson. Up into the fourth floor. Three, two, one. He has been... And the game is all over. The game is over, and they're mobbing Johnny Wooden as he bounces. And that's the way it was in the spring of 1975, as the UCLA Bruins bounced to their ninth national title in the last 10 years. John Wooden, the Wizard of Westwood, had conjoled one last championship out of the Bruins before his retirement. While all this was going on, Bobby Knight's Indiana team watched the proceedings on TV back home in Bloomington. Scott May's broken arm crippled Indiana's tournament hopes, and the only consoling thought for millions of Hoosier fans was wait till next year. Next year began in dramatic fashion. Opening game of the 75-76 season was a nationally televised encounter between the Hoosiers and UCLA. Despite Wooden's absence, Gene Bartow had inherited an awesomely talented team, and Indiana knew it had to play its best. The preseason rankings listed the Big Red as number one, and Indiana proved to the 20,000 eyewitnesses in St. Louis that it deserved that honor. Johnson now tries to move inside the lane. Does, fires it up from 14, no good. Rebound, Benson stays it from going out of bounds and a great rebound effort. Now to Wilkerson. Bobby stops, gives to Scott May, jumper from 18. He got it. Johnny May now with 17. Indiana now leads it 44 to 30, a four point, 14 point lead. Rebound fought for, pulled away by Ken Benson. Down the foot of Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson looking inside, bounces to Abernathy. And a block shot is going to be goal. Here's the pass back to Wilkerson, now to Buckner, screen play, shot up, good! Glenn Buckner now with 14 points. 48 to 32, Indiana. Wilkerson now, drives it left and stops and holds it up. Bounces right side, it comes to May. May back to Wilkerson, 16 footer in the air, he got it! Bobby Wilkerson, first two points of the ball game. Indiana 50, UCLA 32. Here's McCarter now, driving right side of the wing. Shoots it up, he missed it. Rebound, tipped away, fought for it. Benson's got it for Indiana. Off to Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson across the timeline. Spider man, directing traffic. Dribbles it left, stop, push for help. Now in trouble, gives to Buckner. Buckner, top of the queue. Works, right side of Benson. Benny inside of May, jumper up. He got it, well a move by Scott May, and a little hook shot inside. May now with 23. Indiana 56, UCLA 36. 
the combination of Indiana's pressure defense and precision offense demolished the Bruins. Scott May led all scores with 33 points as the Hoosiers rolled to a convincing 84-64 victory. In the second game of the season, the Indiana round ball machine rolled past Florida State 83-59. That game was a tune-up for the upcoming encounter with Digger Phelps Irish from South Bend. Notre Dame, another nationally ranked powerhouse, led by All-American Adrian Dantley, gave the Hoosiers all they could handle in the first half. The Fighting Irish kept right on fighting in the second half, but the talented Hoosiers finally prevailed by the scary score of 63-60. Scott May led the way again with 25 points and 9 rebounds. Indiana by a point, 59 to 58. Here's the foul. Flowers is called for the foul. They fouled Scott Murray. 59, 58. Scott Murray will go to the free throw line for the one and one for Indiana. 37 seconds all to remain. May at the stripe. 23 so far tonight. 24 now. So now, a two-point Indiana lead. One more opportunity. He can make it a three-point lead. Up it goes. Got it again. 25 for May. Indiana, 61. Notre Dame, 58. Four-court pressure. Now Danley will bring it down across the timeline. Danley, one-on-one -on -one against Abernathy. Drives right side. Oh, first three fall on Danley. 29 seconds left, and Indiana has the basketball. Here is Wilkerson. Up court. Almost on it. Butcher to May. May now. Back out to Quinn. Quinn is foul. Jack Williams called for the foul. Let's see if it's a two-shotter. It is. 11 seconds left. Quinn missed both of his free throw attempts. The last time out, just a few moments ago. Another opportunity here. First one up. He got it. 15 for Buckner. 62-60. He can just about score with this one. Let's it fly. The fourth game of the season was another nail-biter. Last year, Kentucky was the team that knocked Indiana out of the playoffs, so in this year's meeting, the Hoosiers were looking for revenge. But the big, tough Wildcats weren't about to play pussycats. They scratched and clawed at Indiana for 40 full minutes. Off the body, Wilkerson to Scott May. May back to Wilkerson, off the Buckner, driving right side. Abernathy, shut up, this is so good. Tip over, good by Baxter. Baxter scores his 23rd point. Five seconds. Then in overtime, a pair of All-Americans named Benson and May asserted themselves. Back again to Quinn. Quinn stops. Inside of Abernathy. Off it is! What a play! Abernathy now it is. 68 to 64, and Indiana takes a four-point lead. Here is the drive by Clinton. Stop. 15 foot shot. No, and the rebound to Benson. Up court to Buckner on the break. Quinn drives. Shoots it up. He scores! Buckner now has got his fourth point. And Indiana takes a six-point lead at 70 to 64. Buckner directing traffic in backcourt, working on Truman Clutter. Passes to Betty, up shot is good! Great play on the pass to Benson as he broke open with his 27 point. Looking cross court at the Ken Benson, looking for Abernathy, can't find him, now goes to Tommy. Inside of Buckner, shot is up, he got it! Buckner now with six. At the school's own second-year holiday tournament in Bloomington, the Hoosiers staged a reenactment of General Sherman's march through Georgia as they destroyed the Georgia Bulldogs 93-56 for their fifth win of the season. Then they completed their sweep of the South with a barnstorming 101-74 win over Virginia Tech. Now it was the Hoosiers' turn to become a Broadway sensation. Three straight impressive wins over New York City schools made Indiana a box office smash in the Big Apple. First, Columbia fell 106-63. Next, it was Manhattan's turn 97-61. Then in the finals of the Holiday Festival, before an overflow crowd at Madison Square Garden, Indiana took on New York's finest, St. John's, 
and beat them 76 to 69. May and Abernathy hit back-to-back -back baskets to put Indiana in front to stay. There's the pass in from Scotty Murray. Back to Wilkerson. Back to Murray. Jump off. Oh, Scotty Murray scores. He's got 24. And Indiana again. 67 to 65 over St. John's. Wilkerson across the timeline. IU trying to open up at least a four-point lead again. To Abernathy. Jumper in the air. Tommy hits it. Abernathy with 12. Indiana 69. St. John's 65. Up court pass. Half court shot. Up in the air. Off the glass. No. And the ball game is over. Indiana was now 9-0 in the regular season, and the difficult Big Ten campaign was about to begin. Ohio State was first on the agenda, and the Buckeyes showed the Hurry and Hoosiers just how tough the battle for the conference crown was going to be. It took some clutch shooting by Scott May and some rugged board work by Ken Benson for the Hoosiers to pull off a two-point victory. Ken Benson displayed his offensive arsenal, scoring 22 points to help lead Indiana past Northwestern, 78-61. Benson continued his offensive pyrotechnics by scoring 33 points against the fleet-footed Michigan quintet at Ann Arbor. This was a battle for early Big Ten supremacy, and the Hoosiers reigned supreme by a score of 80 to 74. Wilkerson now comes back left this time, Abernathy. Aber right back off to Wilkerson. Wilkerson now in the backcourt, top of the key, circles right, gives away to May, jump shot from 14 short. We back to that. Bobby Wilkerson's got it off the bucket, jump shot up and a Glenn Buckner scores the first two points for Indiana. It's tied up at 2-0. Wilkerson back out to Buckner and backcourt. Quinn now holds and gives away to Wilkerson against Grody. Wilkerson now bounces baseline to Scott Bay on the drive. Stops, lobs away to Benson. Back out to Wilkerson on the drive right to Abernathy. Ever pumps an 18-footer gun. Tom Abernathy with his first two. Indiana 6, Michigan 2. Here's Buckner and Steele shoots in. A jump shot up. He hit it in a foul. Bill Hubbard will be called for the foul. The Michigan fans don't like it much, but Benson was hammered inside by Hubbard, his first foul of the game. And Betty gets his first two points. It is now a 10 to 2 ball game. Indiana on top by eight. Slows it down, gets to Buckner right side of the circle. Now to Benson. Turn around, jumper gone. Ken Benson scores his fourth point. Indiana has jumped to a 10 point, 12 to 2 lead here with just about three and a half minutes gone in this first half. Bobby Slows gives to Benny. 15 footer gone. Ken Benson firing home his third bucket of the game. He's got six points with Indiana 14, Michigan 2. Quinn spins away from Ricky Green. Back outside to Tom Abernathy. Now to Workers and then to Murray. Baseline. Puts it up. He got it. Great move by Scotty Murray. One to the bucket well. His first two points of the game. And Indiana leads it 16 to 2. Here is Scott Bay. Bounces to Abernathy. Baseball pass to Benson. Puts it up. And the ball doesn't fall. The shot goes in at the horn. And let's see if it counts. It does. The shot does count. Benson finishes the afternoon with 33. And this ball game is over. And Indiana has won it. A big one over the Michigan Wolverines here in Chrysler Arena this afternoon. The final. Indiana 80. Michigan 74. Superstitions aside, the Hoosiers' 13th game proved to be win number 13 as Michigan State bowed by a score of 69 to 58. Illinois proved no match for the fired-up Hoosiers, losing by 28 points, but the interstate battle with Purdue was a lot closer. Although the Boilermakers fought gamely, Scott May's 32 points led the Hoosiers to a thrilling 71 to 67 victory. Indiana, trailing by a point now. Jimmy Cruz stops. Look for May. Find Scott. Back to Cruz. Cruz now looks inside. Down, top of the key. Dribble stops for May. Jump shot of the air. Go. Scotty May with 28. 61 to 60. The score. Indiana by one. North pass. Abernathy shot up. It is so good. Tap up the shoot by Benson. Benson got a phenomenal tip from the hole. He's got eight points. Indiana draws it to a three-point lead. It's 63 to 60. Beasting now. Passes for Purdue to Wayne Walls. Walls now looking inside. 63, 62, Indiana by one and a steal by Indiana. Bobby Wilkerson again on the break. Down the left side to May. Jump shot is up. He scores! Scotty May now with 30 points. 65, 62 the score, Indiana by three again. Back off to Scott Murray. Back to Cruz. They're playing catch in the back right near the mid-court stripe. Here is Cruz now, circling with a basketball, looking for help. 
Jimmy throws with the ball. Now fires away to Abernathy. Off the man, a great shot of good. Johnny May with 32. That's what Indiana wants in a timeout call by Purdue. In the next game against Minnesota, the surprising Gophers led 45 to 40 at halftime due to the amazing outside shooting of Ray Williams. This was the first time in over 50 games that Indiana went into the locker room trailing. Bobby Knight's adjustments of the half paid immediate dividends, however, as the Hoosiers outscored the Gophers 16 to 4 in one dynamic spurt and eventually one going away. Big pass and jumps for Minnesota, and Indiana's Tommy Abernathy's got the basketball. Off to Wispin. Wispin dribbles it toward the right side of the wing and stops. Looks in, gives it out to Wilkerson, that may. Jump shot in the air by Scotty Go. Scott May scores his ninth point of the game, and it's 45-42. Indiana trailing by three. Lockhart now being hawked out there and get the double team. And Benson and May uh, get grouped up on the switch, but it works out as Saunders gets the basketball. Now to Ray Williams. Jumper up, no good. Rebound, Kent Benson. Ray Williams just missed the shot. And Indiana's rebound brought up by Benson down to Wispin, down to May. Baseline drive, cut off back to Wispin, down to Wilkerson. Jump shot in the air, good. Bobby Wilkerson scores his eighth point. 18 minutes, 24 seconds to go in the second half. Here's a steal by Scott May, a break pass to Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson drives, shoots it off and scores. Bobby Wilkerson's got 10, and Indiana now leads 48 to 47. Here's Jimmy Wispin. Wispin stops and holds, gives it with Abernathy. 15-foot jumper, Tommy hits it. Abernathy now with 14. And Indiana, 52, Minnesota 49. Dave Whiney clears it out to Osborne Lockhart. Lockhart inside to Thompson. Thompson right side to Saunders. Saunders back into Thompson and Kent Benson makes the steal and he's on the break. Benny off to May. Shot up good. What a play by Kent Benson and Scott May. And a great steal by Benson as, as May scores his 13th point of the game. The biggest three they've had in the game. Abernathy fires and hits. Tommy Abernathy does it again. He's hit three straight. That's the 16th point of the game. 56 to 49. Mr. Consistent does it again. And Indiana's connected on 7 of 7 now from the field. In the 17th game of the season, Indiana ran its Big Ten record to 8 and 0. Marvelous Scott May's 32 points paced the Hoosiers to a comfortable 88 to 73 win over Iowa. Scott May continued his high-scoring streak against Wisconsin, pumping in another 30 points as the Hoosiers overwhelmed the beleaguered Badgers 114-61. That offensive explosion set the stage for the Assembly Hall rematch with deadly Michigan. In this, the second of what would turn out to be three hard-fought games with the Wolverines, Indiana trailed by four points with time running rapidly out. Then with 22 seconds left in regulation time, Quinn Buckner came through in the clutch, and Ken Benson somehow saved it at the buzzer. Wayne Radford throws it in back, and Clint Buckner picks it up and crosses the timeline. Buckner with a basketball, looks in the corner. They've got to shoot it to Radford, top of the key, gives up to Quinn. Quinn now fires a jumper from long range. He got it! Buckner's first two points of the game. 19 seconds to go. Jimmy Cruz will make the inbounds play. Cruz gets it into Wayne Radford, back to Buckner. Down to seven seconds, off to Scott Murray, baseline, back out to Quinn, jump shot in the air. Does it fall? Cruz tips it up. Tip up again. Good. Good. It went in. Let's see the count. It does. It counts. They tied it up and did it overtime. Benson. Benson tipped the ball in at the hard. And Indiana has tied it. And they're going to overtime. In overtime, Indiana showed why they were the undefeated number one ranked team in the country. 2.20 to go. First overtime of the ball game. Wayne Radford spinning to the right, looking inside. They have really bottled up. Here's May off to Bobby Wilkerson. Lost the handle, and Wayman Britt's got the ball. Stolen by Radford. Up and in. Unbelievable. Wayne Radford stole the ball from Britt. Turned around and put the bucket in the hole. Radford now with 14. 67-66, Indiana down by one. A minute 53 to go. Back to drives and stops. Comes to Ricky Green. He slides. Shoots it up. No good. Wayne Radford with a loose ball. Bobby Knight can't believe they didn't call a charging foul there. Benson really intimidated that shot. Now Wilkerson. Bounces in the corner to Murray. Back to Wilkerson. Not a battle vicious. Which battle vicious? Back to Wilkerson. Top of the key, Bobby Wilkerson. Bounces right to Murray. Jump shot in the air. Good! Indiana leads 68 to 67 the first time today. A minute 20 to go. Here is John Robinson from Michigan. Robinson on the drive. 
stop. Lost the ball. Got it back. Almost threw it away. Ricky Green to the baseline. Jumper blocked away by Benson. Out of bounds to the blowing to Michigan. Here's the pass into Bergen. Tom Bergen with a basketball gets to Wayman Brett. Brett gives away to Ricky Green. Drives it toward the left corner. To the baseline. Cut off by Bobby Wilkerson and Benson on a double team. Bergen passes to Wayman Brett. Brett comes back to Baxter. 45 seconds to go. Green underneath. Here's a shot. No good. Rebound fought for Bergen. Got it. He lost it out of bounds. It'll belong to Michigan. Now there are 40 seconds left. And I want to tell you, the man who stopped everything there was Kent Benson. He was a mile in the air to block two shots. Here is Green. Well, inbound again. It comes to who? Baseline to Baxter out of bounds. Into the end of ball! Baxter lost it out of bounds on the inbound pass from Green. 39 seconds to go. Bradford bounces into Scotty May. May up the court against Brett. Across the timeline looking for help. Gets it to Benson. And Benson is fouled. Benson is fouled by Tom Bergen. Kent Benson will go to the line. He's got 19 points. He's been the man today. His defense has been incredible, and he has a chance to sell the ball game just about here. Benson with a one-on-one. -on -one. Eyes for the first attempt. It's up. It is good! Roll around the rim and then fell in. Benson now with 20. A chance now to give Indiana a three-point lead with 32 seconds to go. 69 to 67. Eyes it, flies it, and hits it! Benson now with 21. 70 to 67, Michigan ball. Here they come. Brentwell with a basketball. Right wing to Ricky Green. On the drive. Jump shot from 15. No good. Rebound. Battle Michigan. 17 seconds to go, and Indiana's got it. Radford with it. Looking for help on a double team. He's fouled. What a ball game. What a basketball game here this afternoon. 70 67. Indiana leading by three, 12 seconds to go. It's going to be an IU victory in overtime. Win number 20 came at the expense of Michigan State. Ken Benson's 38-point, 12-rebound performance led the Hoosiers to an 85-70 victory. A 58-48 sacking of Illinois made the Big Red juggernaut 21-0 in the season, but the arch-rival Boilermakers made Indiana work hard for win number 22. With 6.09 to play in the first half, and with May, Buckner, and Abernathy on the bench, Purdue held a commanding 29-20 lead. Heads-up play by Wayne Radford, Jimmy Wishman, and Rich Valavicious helped cut the deficit to 39-35 at the half. Three quick buckets by Abernathy and another by May to open the second half shot the Hoosiers into the lead, and they held on for a tough 74-71 win. Bobby Wilkerson passes to May in the corner to Abernathy. Jumper good. Tommy Abernathy scores. Abernathy's fourth point of the game. And now it's Indiana trailing by four again, 41-37. Buckner on the break the other way. Left side jump shot is up and no good. And the rebound to Wilkerson. Bobby dribbles once. Puts it back up. Blocked away to Buckner. Buckner now. Lost it out of trouble to the bounce. Abernathy back to Skyfire. May to Wilkerson. Bobby top of the key. Stops and holds. Left side pass to Benson. Inside to Abernathy. Lost it. Got it back. Fight for it. Puts it up. He got it to fall. What a shot by Abernathy. A sixth point of the game. 41 to 39. And Indiana trails by only two now. Rolls up court, across the timeline, drives it left, stops, shoots, and score, in and out, no good. Went halfway down and came back out again. Benson with a rebound, a walker for Dina Abernathy, great drive up, and good. Abernathy got the two-pointer and a great move inside and a tremendous save from Wilkerson. And timeout called by Purdue. The score is tied up with 18 minutes to go in the final half, 41 to 41. Parker flips away to Macy, inside of Jordan, knocked away by Tommy Abernathy to Quinn Buckner. Buckner now, left side, pass to May, jump shot up, he scores! Johnny May with eight. Indiana takes the lead at 43 to 41, the first time since early in the ball game at two. On the drive baseline, stops, shoots, and misses. Rebound to Benson, up court pass on the fast break to Bobby Walkerson on the drive, puts it up and got it! Walkerson now has popped home his sixth point of the game, and Indiana leads it by four at 45 to 41. Tom Abernathy's 22 points and 10 rebounds powered Indiana to a 76-64 win over Minnesota. And Quinn Buckner, definitely out of a midseason slump, scored 25 points to pace the hustling Hoosiers to a 101-81 romp over Iowa. Indiana made it 25 and 26 in a row with easy wins over Wisconsin and Northwestern, assuring the Big Red their fourth consecutive Big Ten championship. In the Wisconsin game, Scott May hit for 41 points and grabbed 18 rebounds, both individual season highs for the Hoosiers. 
The final game of the regular season was against Ohio State. Even with the Big Ten title wrapped up and a playoff berth assured, this game was important. A win meant back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons and the nation's number one ranking from beginning to end. In the early going, the Buckeyes played the Hoosiers tough. Then with a score 9-7, to Indiana outscored their wilting opponent 20-4 to to put the game on ice early. Across the timeline, Wilkerson for the Hoosiers. Left side dribble, cross court to May, jumper in the air by Scotty. Scotty May was six. 11 to 7 to score. Wilkerson got it across the timeline in a hurry. Now to Benny, shot up good. Ken Fletcher with five. And it's 13 to 7, Indiana by five. Bayless working in just left side of the pool, making a six point lead. And there's a deflection in Buckner on the steal, driving, shooting, and scoring. One first two points of the ball game. Great play that time and a good feed by Tom Abernathy. Here's the pass in. It comes to Doherty, and he drives it left side. Stopped at about the free throw line. Looking for help. Finally had it tipped away, and May ran into Wood. Then it's thrown away by Buckner and a break to Wilkerson. He drives, shoots, and scores. Bobby Wilkerson's first bucket of the game, and it's 17 to 9. Wilkerson to Buckner across the timeline. Quinn passes up to Abernathy baseline. Drives, hooks, shoots, misses. Rebound May up and in. Got May with eight. 19 to 9 the score, and Indiana now by 10. Wilkerson now throws it down to Benson, driving shot up, and it's good. Hammond buried this one against the backboard, and Indiana gets the two-pointer, May 7th of the game, or rather Benson 7th of the game, and it's 21 to 11, Indiana by 10. Wilkerson in the corner to May, Scott holds, looking, dribbling in that back out top of the circle, now off to Buckner, Buckner on the wing, inside of Benson, turn around, jumper, no good again, May with a rebound. Scotty had it knocked away. Picks it back up. Back to Quinn. Quinn fires a jumper from 12. Go on. Buckner with four. Wilkerson to Buckner to May. Jump shot up. And Scotty is dead out of there. He's got 10 points. 25 to 11. Looking for help. Inside pass. Stolen away. Abernathy's got it. Tommy clears off to Buckner. Buckner now. Looking inside for Benson. Benny's got it. Dribbles once. Brings it back out. Shoots and scores. Bayless now bounces it in. It comes to Mark Klein. Klein now brings it back outside. New face in the game is Rick Smith in the, for the first time. Gives to Bayless. Jumper from the long range is no good. Tipped out by Benson. The Buckner fast break to Wilkerson. Driving shot is up. Good! Wilkerson's a great body control, and he pops home his fourth point. 29 to 11 to score, Indiana. The win, of course, was important. But just as important to Bobby Knight was the class Hoosier fans displayed in a glowing tribute paid his former coach, Fred Taylor. Taylor was coaching his final game after 18 seasons at Ohio State, and it was a fitting end to a great career. The victory over the Buckeyes made it 34 straight wins at the Assembly Hall, 37 consecutive Big Ten victories, and 57 regular season games without a loss. Now it was on to the NCAA playoffs, and Indiana had something to prove this year would be different than last. The amazing Hoosiers were 27-0 in regular season play, and a look at the stats shows why. May averaged 23.5 points a game and shot over 52%. Benson scored 17.3 and shot over 57%, and Abernathy chipped in with a 10-point average and 56% shooting from the field. Wilkerson totaled 171 assists, and Buckner had 133. Benson hauled down 282 rebounds, May 245. Nearly a half million people saw the Hoosiers play in person, with over 200,000 catching the action at Assembly Hall. In the opening round of the NCAA playoffs, Indiana faced St. John's, the team they beat earlier in the finals of the Holiday Festival. Indiana was a solid pregame favorite and showed why by crushing St. John's 90 to 70. Listen to these key highlights. Scott Bay will inbound the ball underneath the Indiana basket. Benson is back in. Wilkerson sits down. Radford stays, gives to Murray. Shot around, no good. Rebound tip. And picked off by Beaver. Seven, Scotty May stole it away from a back to Abernathy. Back to Benson. Shot up good. What a play that was. Indiana's defense, or rather their defense, started the play with May intercepted. Then three brilliant passes. Buckner now, circle spinning right. Down the right side of the lane. Jump her up. He missed it. Rebound Benson. Back up, and he scores. Jump shot in the air. Go out of the foul. Johnny May scores. The foul is 
called inside. And the shot will count. Here is Rafford. Right side of Buckner. Buckner driving. Shot off. He missed the goal. It went in. It hit the front of the rim. Looked like it was going to whip out, and then it popped in. And Buckner now has got 11. Indiana by play, 10 points. 60 play to 53. Buckner now stops. Still in the dribble. Looks in. Gets the pass. Knocked away. Picked it up. Puts it on. Johnson will be called for a goal down there. George Johnson just picked that one out of the air as Manson gets credit for his 16th point of the game. Bradford to May. Fakes the shot. Fakes again. Drive. Shoots. And misses. Rebound May. Puts it back up. He got it. The shot will count and he's fouled. An incredible performance by Scotty May underneath that time. 9.30 to go. May eyes. Flies. Hits. Scotty with 27. And Indiana 69, St. John's 55. Down the floor, Robertson, and he got it to fall. Robertson pops home his first two of the contest. And it's 90 to 70 with six seconds, five. Whitman drives, shoots it up, scoop shot no good. One second to go, and that is it. The ball game is over, and Indiana advances to the Middle East Regional in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, next Wednesday, or second next Thursday. And the score, till this afternoon, Indiana 90. With the preliminary game out of the way, it was on to Baton Rouge for the Mideast Regionals. Indiana's first opponent would be a tough Alabama team rated sixth in the country and led by All-American Leon Douglas. The Crimson Tide just finished demolishing a strong North Carolina team and matched up well in height and speed with the starting Indiana Five. In a clever move, Coach Knight installed a sagging defense to help choke off the inside threat of Douglas. The ploy confused Alabama, and Indiana rolled to a 12-point lead late in the first half and again early in the second half. Now trying to dribble across the key, gets to Abernathy. Abernathy turns around looking for May, can't find it, goes to Rafford, right side on the baseline, back to Battle Vicious, on the dribble left side. Rich turns around, back away to Scott May with 30 seconds to go in the half. Not Abernathy, long jumper by Tommy, it's no good, rebound Wilkerson, dribbles once, puts it up, score! Bobby Wilkerson now with his eighth point of the game. Indiana 37, Alabama 27. Buckner with the basketball for IU. Across the timeline, picked up by Murray. Driving right side of the wing, spinning back left. Bounces to Abernathy. Tommy to May. Jump shot by Scotty. Gone. Scott May with his 13th point. Murray across the timeline. Works it back past right side. Original King. King knocks away. Buckner on the steal. Quinn on the break. Down the floor. Driving left side. Stop. Shoots it up. Over glass and in. Buckner now with six. Indiana 41, Alabama 29, and Indiana fires two home before Alabama can hit. Benson had not fouled out of a game all year despite his aggressive board work. But with 13 minutes to play, he picked up his fourth foul and had to sit down. By the time he returned six minutes later, the Crimson Tide had cut the lead to four. Four court pressure by Alabama, and May will bring it across the time front. Here's Scott Murray, giving off to Quinn Buckner. Buckner driving to the right corner, back outside he comes. Stops hold, bounces to Benson. Then he turns around on the dribble. Oh, Benson foul, they call on Benson. Bobby Knight off the bench, didn't like it, but he didn't say anything, and now there'll be a timeout, and Benson has got his fourth foul. With less than four minutes to play, Alabama sneaked into a 69-68 lead. But the Hoosiers shut out the tide the rest of the way and made the pressure shots when they counted. Bobby now, looking underneath, circles it out front, bounces to Benson. Benny now, back out to Buckner, and Buckner holding. Now in the corner to Bay. Jump shot, long range, good! Scott May with 25, and Indiana's got the lead back. Anthony Murray, off to McCord. Keith McCord baseline, turns around. Looks inside, lobs to the way outside. The Murray underneath the Douglas, turn around, hook shot, no good! Scotty May with a rebound again. May on the dribble now. Crosses over, gives off to Tommy Abernathy. 1.15 to go. Now back off to Scott or Ken Benson, and Benson holding back to Murray. Still on the dribble is Scotty May off to Tommy Abernathy. Abernathy is fouled by Ricky Brown. 40 seconds to go in the ball game, and Indiana with a chance here to take a three-point lead if Abernathy can connect on the one and bonus. Abernathy eyes the first one, up it goes. No good. He missed it. And Alabama with the ball, down by only one with 35 seconds to go. Now the dribble left side. Anthony Murray, outside pass comes to Dunn, back to Murray. 24 seconds. Now away the pass comes to Keith McCord. He lost it. And it's over. Indiana's got it. Tommy Abernathy somehow stolen the ball. 14 seconds. All the show of the clock, and Abernathy again with a one-and-one -one opportunity. 
He has six points in the game, a 73% free throw shooter coming into this game. He has hit two or three so far tonight. He just missed his first attempt at a one and one just a few seconds ago. Abernathy ties it, flies it, hits it! Tommy Abernathy has got seven! Indiana now by two and a chance for one more, can make it a three-point lead. Abernathy, one more time, puts it up, goes! Abernathy with eight! Here it comes, it goes to Bynes, across the timeline, drives it left side, stops, shoots, and misses! Rebound to Bobby Wilkerson! Six seconds to go and a foul! The foul is called on McGilvin! And Indiana now goes with Bobby Wilkerson to the free throw line for a one and one For Galvin's first foul of the game, but Indiana now looks to be in the driver's seat with only six seconds left. If Wilkerson can get just one, it's all over. So Wilkerson at the line. Wilkerson's shot is up, around, good! Bobby Wilkerson scores his 13 point, it's all over now. Second shot is good! Bobby Wilkerson with 14. Tommy Bonds in bounds, five seconds, four, half-court shot, no good, out of bounds, two seconds still on the clock. And Indiana will have it again. What a ball game. And Indiana is into the championship of this regional. Scotty May holds on, it's over, and Indiana has held on. To continue, 74 to Alabama, 69. What a tremendous basketball game here tonight. For most of the regular season, Indiana's chief rival for the number one spot in the national polls was flamboyant Al McGuire's equally flamboyant Marquette team. At season's end, the Hoosiers held the top spot while Marquette was rated number two. Now in the heart of Bayou country, the two teams met for the first time in a battle for the Mideast Regional Championship. The Hoosiers decimated Marquette's zone defense in the early going, hitting eight of their first 10 shots and 14 of their first 18 for a quick 30 to 19 lead. Down the floor, Quinn Buckner across the timeline. Tie ball game, Indiana and Marquette. Buckner to Benson, hook shot is up, he got it! Ken Benson scores his first two of the game, and Indiana takes a four to two lead. Bobby Wilkerson now brings it across the timeline. Lloyd Walton is on, Scott Murray. Bounce pass to Buckner, jump shot up, he got it! Quinn Buckner scores his first two, and Indiana takes a six to two lead. To the top of the lane, bounces into Benson, turn around, jump shot, go up! Ken Benson continues the hot trend with his six point of the long game. Indiana 12, Marquette 7. Here is Wilkerson now. Bobby looks outside. Goes left to me. Jump shot by Scotty is. He's in and out. No. Rebound. Benson puts it back up and scores. What a move by Benson. Buckner double team. Drives it left side. Inside Abernathy. Baseline. Stop. Back out to Quinn. Buckner now. Fakes the shot. Abernathy. Baseline. Jumper. Good. In and out. No good. Rebound. Tip to Wilkerson. 16 foot jumper. Good. Bobby Wilkerson now with four. Indiana Twenna continues to shoot tremendous field goal percentage here. Buckner down, down the floor. Quinn across the timeline. Left side dribble. Stopped inside the Benson. Hook shot is up and Ken Benson hits again. Benson now with 12. 28 to 19 the score. Buckner up court pass to Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson to Radford. Jumper by Wayne is good. Wayne Radford's first two of the game. Ball got away from the officials. Marquette basketball and Indiana's taking a 30 to 19 lead on 11 point margin. Scott May picked up three quick fouls in the first seven minutes of the game and had to sit down. The Warriors took advantage of the stellar forward's absence to cut deeply into the Hoosier lead. Butch Lee put Marquette briefly into the lead 37-36 shortly after the start of the second half. But then May went back to work and the Hoosiers rallied around it. Jimmy Cruz on the drive for IU, stops and gives to Buckner. Now left side to May, long bomb gone! Scotty May with a six point of the ball there. 38-37, IU by one. Cruz with a basketball on the dribble. Bounces in the corner to May. May's jump shot up. Good! Scotty May has got his eight point. 40 to 37. Indiana by three now. 3-2 three zone. Cruz passes to Scott May. Jumper in the air. Going again! Scott May now with 10. Indiana up to a three-point lead one more time. 42, 39 to score. With 12.54 remaining, Al McGuire picked up a costly technical foul, and Indiana took advantage of a gift. Buckner now, just to the way to Jimmy Cruz. Cruz with the basketball. Inside of Abernathy, jumper in the air, good! Tommy Abernathy with his eighth point of the ball game. And Indiana takes the lead. Al McGuire on the floor, he should have gotten a technical. I don't know if he did or not. Well, Al McGuire finally picked up the technical foul, Max, after he had walked around a little bit. He went over and kicked the table at the scores bench. And that got the technical from Eric Brown. And Scotty May hits the technical punch. May has got his 
first point of the game, and Indiana takes a 49-41, eight-point lead over Marquette, and Indiana will have a basketball back again. Marquette refused to die, however, and clawed their way back to within three points when McGuire again got called for a fatal tee. 30 seconds to go. Indiana's got made of Tommy Abernathy. Abernathy holding on in a foul on Tatum, and he's out of the game. Earl Tatum commits his fifth foul and fouls out of the game. 22 points for Tatum. A phenomenal contest tonight for Earl Tatum. It'll be Scott May going to the free throw line. Al McGuire acting up again. 25 seconds to go. Indiana will be at the free throw line with a three-point lead. Well, McGuire got a technical foul. I can't believe he got it. So Abernathy now goes to the line. McGuire just picked up a technical foul. He may get another one. Scott is up by Aber. From then on, it was easy pickings for the big red basketball machine. Tommy will inbound it. Abernathy for Wilkerson. Wilkerson fouled by Walton. Wilkerson to the strike. Bobby with four points in the game, all in the first half. Free throw. He got it. Bobby Wilkerson with five. Good again. Six for Wilkerson. 24 seconds left. Puts Lee down the floor for Marquette. Shot is up to it. Lee scores his eighth point of the ball game. Full court pressure. Another foul. Walton, I believe, got the foul again. 61-56 the score. 17 seconds to go, and again Indiana will go to the free throw line. Tommy Abernathy goes to the free throw line. Abernathy to the stripe. Nine points to his credit. A one and one again. Tom eyes it, flies it, hits it. Tommy Abernathy with 10. Second shot. Good again. Tommy now with 11. Indiana 63, Marquette 56. Down to four for three. Driving shot is up and no good. We now fought for tipped up. 10 seconds to go. Indiana's Bobby Walker has got it. Fast break to Buckner. Twin drive. Shoots it up. Go! One second. It's over. Bobby Knight on the bench. They're jumping up and down. Indiana's on to the final four. In honor of the American Bicentennial, the NCAA championships were held at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. In many ways, the Final Four represented a unique quartet. Never before had two undefeated teams advanced to the national finals. Never before had a team sought its 11th NCAA title. And never before had two teams from the same conference made their way into the big shootout. Rutgers was the Eastern representative, unbeaten but virtually untested against top-ranked competition. They drew Midwest regional champ Michigan. In the opening game, the hard-driving, fast-flying Wolverines dazed, demolished, and devoured the heretofore unbeaten Scarlet Knights. In the feature match, it was defending champion UCLA against undefeated and top-ranked Indiana. The Hoosiers had badly beaten the Bruins in the opening game of the season, but according to all scouting reports, the Bruins had improved significantly in the last 30 games. Not only that, these were the Bruins of UCLA, tournament tested tough with a tradition as strong as Philadelphia's own Liberty Bell. In the early moments of the game, Richard Washington looked like he was out to repeat last year's MVP tourney performance. Andre McCarter to David Greenwood. He lobs into Washington, turns around, shot is in the air, good. Washington, a good move to the bucket that time, went around Benning, and it's a 2-2 score. Pass pass goes right to Washington, jump shot up, good. Richard Washington with his fifth point of the game, and he's tearing Indiana up right now. It's a 7-2 contest. Bobby Knight called a quick timeout and made what was the key strategy move of the game. He moved Benson back to the middle and put the tenacious Tom Abernathy on Washington. Abernathy's defense was meaner than a junkyard dog's as he completely shut out the Bruin All-American forward until the game was virtually wrapped up. With Washington shut off and Benson clogging the middle, UCLA was forced to low percentage perimeter shooting. Control of the game swung to the Hoosiers midway through the first half and by halftime, Indiana held a 34 to 26 lead. Quinn Buckner gives to Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson goes to Scott Murray. And May bounces away to Quinn Buckner. Buckner now holding on to the basketball. Against Andre McCarter, flips it away to Benson. Now back off to Buckner. Buckner down the left side, looking for May. Can't find him. Back outside of Wilkerson. Wilkerson now holding, bouncing to May. Great move up and out. Scotty May has got his third point of the game. Indiana now has tied it up at 15-15 with 10.49 to go. McCarter holding on to the basketball outside. McCarter bounces and Tommy Abernathy steals. Aber on the break. Stops, slows it down, gets to Buckner. Good job on Indiana. Tommy Abernathy 
doing a lot of the job defensively as well as offensively. Five turnovers now on the Bruins. Here's Wilkerson with the basketball. Up to Buckner. Buckner will make that May. Jumper good. Scotty May has got five. Two, one, two zone. Here is Scott May. Jump shot up. He got it. Scotty May gets loose for his seven point. 19-19 tie. Back outside of Quinn. Quinn goes to Scott May on the left wing. Back to Abernathy. Baseline jump shot up. And he got it. Tommy Abernathy now with a six point of the game. 23 to 19 Indiana. Wilkerson circles out front. Comes back left. Works on pass on agenda Buckner. Long jump shot in the air. Good. Quinn Buckner fires home his fourth point. Indiana starts to find the range now. They lead by six, 25 to 19. Looking to clear it. Gives to Benson. Off to Abernathy. Shot up. No goal. Fight for it. Benny puts it back up. Missed again. Tip up. Good. Gene Bartos jumping up and down like he's a cheerleader out there. Can't believe the no call was made inside. Buckner across the key. Jump shot up. Good. Buckner now with six points. 23 Indiana by six again. Buckner gives to Jimmy Cruz, and Cruz holding the ball passes to Scott Mayer. Abernathy in the corner, and he got it. Tommy Abernathy's got 10. 34 24 the score, and Indiana with the biggest lead of the game of 10 points. Scott May was having a rare cold shooting day, but his offensive explosiveness was more than made up for by the brilliant play of the unsung, multi talented duo of Tom Abernathy and Bobby Wilkerson. Buckner now out of dribble, spins back toward the baseline, gives to Wilkerson. Bobby Wilkerson now, trying to cross the lane, does Abernathy, what a feed and what a play by Abernathy. Abernathy now with 12, and Bobby Wilkerson, a tremendous feed inside. 40 to 30, IU by 10, UCLA basketball. Bobby Wilkerson now brings it back across the key, gives the time Abernathy. Now to May, jump shot by Scotty is no good, rebound tips up no good, Bobby Wilkerson puts it in with a foul. Now with a Benson, not Abernathy, on the drive, puts it up, what a move! Tommy Abernathy with a straight power move to the basket, and Aber's got 14. He has been a player of the game so far. With the game under control, the Hoosiers worked patiently for the good shot in the closing minutes, and dethroned the national champions by a convincing 65-51 score. Jimmy Cruz now, bringing it up, gets it across the time slot. Long pass to Benny underneath, puts it up and scores! Ed Benson now with 16 points. 63, 51, 12 seconds left. And the end in the finals. Here's a drive, baseline, back outside, long block shot, Wilkerson, five seconds, Jimmy Cruz on a break, he scores! It's over! And Indiana is in the finals against the Michigan Wolverines. It's an all Big Ten final. Bobby Knight and Gene Bartow shake hands in front of us. And Indiana, who will not be deprived of the finals this year, they are in the final ball game. Indiana and Michigan, it's all Big Ten. Bobby Knight trying to get his ball players off the floor as they shake hands for the UCLA players now. And it's 65-51 the final here this afternoon. Bobby Knight had said it before, and he said it again before the final game. Michigan is the best team we've faced all season. With that thought in mind, Indiana began the final leg in its quest for the national crown for the first time in nearly a quarter century. Last year, Indiana's dreams ended in plaster of Paris rubble as Scott May's broken arm cost them a bona fide shot at the NCAA title. This year, in the opening minutes of the final game, it seemed like instant deja vu as Bobby Wilkerson, who performed so brilliantly against UCLA, was clobbered and KO'd by an accidental elbow. Tommy clears it back outside of Buster. Now with him, Scott driving right. Stop. Knocked away. Grody on the steal. Steve Grody on the break. Two on two. Grody back inside of Britt. Shot goes. Wayman Britt got his first bucket of the game. And Bob Workman, the official, talking with Bobby Knight now. Indiana's player was down, and Bobby wanted to know why something hadn't been done. And it's Bobby Wilkerson, and he is shaken up on the floor. Wilkerson is shaken up. Bob Young, the trainer for Indiana, is out there taking a look at him. It's very difficult to see what happened to Bobby. Wilkerson's still on the floor, and he's not moving around very quickly. Michigan was going down in a fast break. Wilkerson went up in the air, and that's the last we saw of him until after we saw him laying on the floor. And the officials had finally called timeout. And uh, so Wilkerson has been laid on the stretcher. And again, he has not moved other than moving his leg one time, and they're trying to keep his head still. It could mean that he has a concussion. All we know at this point is that he will not be in the ball game for some time, and he has been put on a stretcher. He'll be going out of this basketball game for the NCAA title. And I know that 
this Indiana basketball team has to be definitely saddened by that fact. For most of the first half, Indiana seemed as dazed as their fallen comrades. They left the court at intermission, trailing 35 to 29. In the second half, a rejuvenated Hoosier team took the floor. Five minutes into the half, the score was tied, and Michigan looked like a rocket ship that had just run out of propellant. Now Indiana's Jimmy Westman across the timeline. Works it against Brody. Driving to the right side, top of the circle, gives to Benson. Turns around, passes underneath the May. Back to win a Buckner. Shot goes, and it counts, and he's fouled. Buckner goes to Abernathy. Tommy, back outside to Westman. Westman now, gives to Benson. Jump shot by Benny Good. Ken Benson now with 16 points. May looks... Fires to Jimmy Wispin. Wispin brings it outside. Spins around. Dribbling across the key. Tries to penetrate. Can't just the Benson. Turn around. Jumper by Benny. is good. Ken Benson has got 18. 45-43. And Indiana's taking the lead by two. Brody driving to the right side. Butcher field. He's on a breakaway. Drives down. Puts it up. Good. Glenn Butcher now with eight. And Indiana takes a four-point lead. Scott May and Ken Benson, the All-American tandem that had been ineffective in the first half, really began to make their dominant presence felt from the crucial going. With five minutes remaining, the Hoosiers had built a virtually insurmountable 69-59 to 59 lead. Here is Jimmy Wistler for Indiana across the midcourt line against Ricky Green, driving right, giving to Scott May, baseline, jump shot up. He got it to fall! Scotty May with 18 points. And Indiana 61, Michigan 55. May now, looking for help, gives to Buckner. Hawked out there by Grody. Now Buckner looks in, gives to Benny. Benson on the baseline. Puts the shot up and missed it. Rebound tipped up. Battle for it underneath. Scramble Bay puts it up and got it! What a shot by Scotty Murray! And May now has got 20. And it's 65-59. And Indiana now with a seven. They get a six-point lead again. Buckner now at the free throw line. Crosses it. Looks for help. On the double team. Looks it inside. Abernathy driving. Shot is a good! Abernathy! From here on in, the turbocharged Big Red basketball machine looked like A.J. Foyt cruising along in a victory lap at the Indy 500. Baxter flies down the other end, fires a jumper, no good, and Benson rebound. Up for Abernathy. Abernathy May, he's got a breakaway, drive, shoot, good! Scotty May has got 24, and Indiana leads by 12. Buckner driving across one man, brings it back outside. Fires to Jimmy Wistman. Wistman now, looks for help. Now turns around and bounces to Quinn Buckner. Buckner driving toward the lane. Underneath, puts it up, scores! Buckner scores right down the pipe. He's got 16. And now it's 80 to 66 with a minute 40 to go. Here's Quinn Buckner doing a jig in the floor. He's dancing up and down, doing a little dance. Here comes May out of the game. Benson and May embracing on the floor. Valerius comes in. Scotty May jumping up and down. And now Cruz out of the game, and Bobby Bender comes in, and Jimmy Cruz with a standing ovation. And all the rest of the players come up and hug Jimmy. Ten seconds, Baxter almost lost it. Here's Fishing on the dribble. Baxter down the right side. Lost the ball, Valerius in the steal. Bradford on a break, five seconds to go drive, shoots it up, and this is Hayes! Hayes scores the gun. Indiana's number one. They've won it. Indiana's won it. They're the national champion for 1976. Can you believe it? Incredible. Bobby Knight and Johnny Orr standing here in front of us, shaking hands, so Breeder now. Unbelievable as Indiana's won the national championship. And the Hoosiers have won it all. 86 to 68. Haymore hits the bucket of the gun. The Hoosiers out of the floor. And Max, what a tremendous fight this is. From a personal standpoint, as, as I look at this thing, I think of an 80-year-old man sitting up in the mountains in New York right now uh, who has just watched the game on television, Claire B., and, and there's nobody that's been uh, more instrumental in my basketball life than, than he has been. Uh, he's called me every day that we've been here, and he went with us to Baton Rouge, would have been here tonight except for a problem he has with an eye. He talked to our kids after the Minnesota game. Dave asked that question and, and uh, talked to them and talked to them about um, positive thinking and a lot of things. This is a guy that, that is a brilliant, brilliant person. I, I think of my own college coach, Fred Taylor. I, I don't think there was a person out here in this crowd that was rooting harder for us than the coach was. I think of Pete Newell, who again has called me every day that we've been here to talk about what we're going to do or, or how we've got to play. Think of all the people down the line that have really helped me with the game of basketball, and there, there are a lot of them. Who's your hysteria? 
It happens every spring. But some springs are more hysterically pleasing than others. Those who remember the thrilling springtime of 53 when Branch McCracken led Indiana to its last NCAA title know how super the feeling can be. Those of you who witnessed this past year know that Hoosier hysteria takes on a new dimension when Indiana University wins an NCAA title. Infectious Hoosier hysteria becomes delirious Hoosier euphoria. Thank <laughs> you.